guys. What up YouTube, TK here, and today we are back with the Razer E300 scooter build. Now, last place we left it, we had just blown up the power MOSFET on the speed controller. So today we're going to replace it. We had the IRFB3607 in there. This is good for 75 volts and 80 amps. Forget that, we're gonna replace it with this, the TK100 E08N1. This is good for 100 amps and 80 volts. Now, I think that's still probably not enough. So if it isn't, I bought lots of them and we're going to parallel them up. And I haven't really done that before and it's gonna be an absolute pain in the ass. The original MOSFET sat here and this clip sat on top to actually hold it down to the heatsink, but there's no way I'm gonna fit three in that space. So instead, I'm actually gonna run wires off the board and probably even move this heatsink and just go ahead and tack them on like that. I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna work, but we'll make it work. Looking inside, there's actually some space in here which would be perfect to mount the FET. So I think we'll drill some holes and mount them in there. There we go. Drill is running out of battery. Aluminium's a nice soft metal, so it's not too difficult to work with for stuff like this, which is really great. We just get in there and just rip away at it. Don't ask me what this actually does to the heat sink's thermal performance. Look at that, absolutely professional. I've created this mount on the back of the heat sink where we had some spare space, and that's actually really rather tidy. So I think I'm just gonna use two FETs and hope that's enough because trying to wire in a third one in parallel is gonna be really, really difficult, and I don't have anything else to mount it with anyway. I think I get a sort of meditative enjoyment out of this. It's just very calming, screwing together small little mechanisms. Um, I don't think I can be put in jail for that. It's in there nicely above the capacitors, really cool. We've got our little diode here on the side all by itself. We've got to run some wires, which is going to be difficult, but I think we can make it work. So I've just had a great idea and I'm actually going to use this little strip of proto board just to make wiring this up a little bit neater. So it should be good. Go ahead and tack solder that on. Very good. We'll get the other gate soldered down. Now, if you don't know what the gates are, they're basically the signal that tells the transistor when to turn on and off. Very important, but not very high current. Now, because the drain and the source are higher current, we're going to do them a little bit differently. We're going to give them two traces each. That's why I've got this bent out here like this. Now, on the topic of the gate, I'm actually glad I did some further reading. What I found out is when you're paralleling MOSFETs, you should actually give each MOSFET its own gate resistor because that means when one of them switches on first, it stops it pulling down the other one's gate drive or something along those lines. So I need to give them both their own gate resistor. The problem is originally this circuit used a 10 ohm gate resistor for its single MOSFET. I don't have any 10 ohm resistors, so I've only got four 70s and they're a bit big. So I'm gonna hunt around, do a bit more research, see what I can come up with. As unlikely as it sounds, this IBM XT hard drive is actually coming to the rescue. It has a whole bunch of SMD resistors that are perfect for our gate drive resistor. We're gonna use two that are 100 ohms for the gate drives. Now, I'm not going to come out and say SMD soldering is easy, but when you're working at this sort of 80s technology level, it's not too hard either. Like, you can at least still see the parts. Oh, this hard drive is broken, by the way. I'm not just, you know, tearing it up for no good reason. Oh, great. I just, did you see that? I just I got the resistor off and I dunked it in the hole. If anyone wants this hard drive, I'll put it up on eBay and uh, you can challenge yourself to get it working again. Oh, I just found some 10 ohm resistors. Actually, we're gonna use those. That's much better. Yeah, 10 ohm. So after a fiddly little bit of soldering, we now have a gate resistor for our first MOSFET here and a gate resistor for our second MOSFET here going through this lead to the gate there. So we've got two gates. We have a drain and a source or vice versa. Eh? I forget which way around, but we'll figure that out in a minute. Let's actually go and solder this to this. Now our gate comes off this little R30 here, this little resistor, comes along this big long trace and goes to T4. So we're just gonna scrape the solder mask off that trace so we can solder both our new gate leads to that trace instead of going all the way to R30. You always want the shortest possible line going from your gate driver to the gate of the MOSFET because it cuts down things like oscillation and stuff and it makes the transistor turn on much quicker, which means the transistor spends less time half on getting hot and melty. 
We don't like our transistors hot and melty, we like them on. So if you're wondering why I removed the relay, it's basically because I wanted to solder the drain and source leads to the top of this board because trying to snake them around underneath was going to be really difficult. So I took the relay off because we weren't using it anyway. I'm going to scrape away some solder masks to connect the drain and the source should go just there. It'll be perfect. I'm not sure if I actually believe it myself, but I've got it done. I've actually finished this MOSFET sandwich monstrosity. So... Let's bolt it up and put it in the scooter and watch it catch fire when something shorts out. <laughs> we've just got everything plugged in. We're just gonna we're just gonna give it a twitch. Doesn't work. Dead. Maybe I'll hook up the switch backwards. No, nope, it's completely dead. That's really sad. So I did all that soldering for absolutely nothing. Okay, it was because I hooked up the switch wrong. So if I hook the switch up properly. It may actually work, I hope. Okay, let's find out. Because that just popped. All right. We have drive. All right, well, it's the moment of truth. We've got two FETs in there. Speed control appears to be working. There's not really much more for me to say other than try and drive it and see if it blows up or not. And I hope it doesn't because I crashed last time and that was bad enough. Here we go. Whoa! Whoa! Holy crap, it works! Yes! Yes, it actually works. Okay, so I've just driven it up and down the driveway. It works, it's awesome. Um, I have to be really careful. It still could blow up if it gets hot. So more testing to be done and I'm not gonna do any more tonight. I'm just so pleased that it actually does work. It's actually spinning the rear wheel. It's got so much power right now. Uh, <laughs> it's so cool. I just can't believe it didn't, you know, go full throttle and spin me into the bushes like last time because that was terrifying. But Holy crap, we did it. We paralleled FETs, nothing blew up in the first five minutes. That's incredibly impressive and I am stoked. It's actually so fast, it's scary. So feeling in here after my little jaunt up and down the driveway, it feels a little bit warm in here, but not really hot and that's a really good sign. So I think what I'll do tomorrow is rather than any kind of scientific testing, I'm just gonna go out and give it a big thrash. And if I die, I die. I don't apologize for the dramatics. I just really, really love electric scooters, okay? I just, I just do. All right, it is now Tuesday. Last night we had the huge success. Our speed controller mods were successful. The two parallel FETs allowed the scooter to use the power from our new big battery pack. However, I'm a bit tenuous on whether it's actually gonna be reliable. So I want to see if it's overheating, if it's getting too hot. The way I'm going to do that is this. So this is a thermocouple attached to a multimeter. I'm going to glue this thermocouple one way or another to the heat sink of the speed controller. I'm going to wind this lead out, have this taped up on the handlebars. I'm going to thrash on it, go uphill, just do lots of standing starts. Then if it's overheating, we'll know damn, we just got to buy a better speed controller or oh hell yeah, our mod worked and I can't wait to find out and this is going to be the perfect way to do it. It's also because I'm a little bit scared of this thing blowing up and sending me careening into a tree. I actually thought this was going to be hard. Duct tape, got the serious stuff, buy a big roll of this and I promise you'll never be sad again. If this starts getting over 60, 70 degrees, I'm probably gonna get real nervous and back off. The mod went well last night, but now it is time for the stress test. I'm gonna ride this thing hard, and we're gonna see if we let the smoke out. Let's go. it for two minutes we're up to 31 degrees on the speed controller now that may not be accurate there could be some air gap between the thermocouple and the heat sink it's not a perfect attachment I use super glue after all but that's a good indicator what was worrying is I actually noticed some power fade when I was coming uphill which is really not great um, I might check the battery voltage and see if that's why 
I've left it for 15 minutes now after that very short two minute ride and it's still sitting at 27 degrees, which suggests it's not very effective at losing heat out of that cavity. That's bad, but we'll thrash it a bit more and see how we go. I'm also nervous that it felt like we were losing power there already. The battery's sitting up at 39 volts, so it's almost fully charged. So I don't know why we were losing power, but we'll have to find out. So the second test run has gone very badly. We went uphill, we went as fast as we possibly could in a straight line. We only got up to 20 kilometers an hour, which is slower than we used to go. We've got a temperature of 40 degrees, which I wouldn't consider that bad, but the scooter is now limping. It's just, it's absolutely crawling. Um, I don't know why, I can smell something hot. Hot is bad, hot is very bad. It's just, it's really bad. We'll find out what is so incredibly hot. Doesn't feel like the speed control. The speed control is warm, but it's not hot. It's not melting, but something is hot. I don't know what. Okay, so looking inside, I can't actually find anything obviously wrong. The scooter is getting slower and slower, but... Oh. Oh. Ah. Uh... Ow! God, that's hot! Oh, bloody Christ, I think I know what's happened. Okay, take a look at this. So I've left the scooter sitting while I ran to grab my other thermocouple. The motor's sitting over 60 degrees, which might not sound like a whole heat, but inside it's probably even hotter. Regardless, this motor I think is very, very dead. It's still too hot to touch. Um, it's it's absolutely, it's, it's really hot. Um, so that's a shame, and that was entirely unexpected. Generally, uh, these motors will take an absolute pounding, but I guess 42 volts and 100 or 100 or more amps isn't great. It barely wants to move at all. It sounds like a truck. And that's sad, and it's also very hot. When these brush DC motors fail from heat, what actually happens is the plastic insulation on the coils melts and the coils start to short together. And so it gives the effect of the motor having less and less coils and other bad things happen. And generally it runs hotter and runs worse, which is exactly what we're seeing here. So I'm not gonna end the video here. We do need a new motor, a bigger motor, a better motor, but we're also gonna do some disassembly and have a look inside. So the motor's probably dead, and we know that because it is by far the hottest thing in the scooter. It's been half an hour now since I stopped riding, and it's still hot. Like, literally still hot. My confidence level of this motor actually working ever again is so low that you can see I have cut the leads to it. We're going to open it up and see how it failed. Oh, God. It's... I'm getting filthy. All right, so we've got the back off. We can see our four brushes. Oh, it smells horrible. It smells absolutely abhorrent. This PCB looks quite charred, which is not great. Okay. Here's the bearing. Um, that's still warm. I think this is called the commutator ring. Anyway, that's what the brushes contact. You can see there's a lot of deposit from the brushes on it. It's thick and black which is especially concerning considering I haven't actually put that many kilometers on this scooter because most of the time it's been sitting around waiting for upgrades. Here we go. Oh, I'll pull that out of there. Now there was some resistance on those magnets. So that suggests, yeah, the magnets are still, oh, the magnets are still fine. Oh God, wow, this, I kid you not, this is still hot. That's almost too hot to touch. That's gotta be at least 50 degrees. Um, so this is where the damage was done to the coils in almost any system, whether it's electronic, pneumatic, hydraulic, if it's hot, it's broken. And this is very hot and thus very broken. What will have happened is, and I'm not sure if I can actually prove this to you on camera, but what would have happened is these coils got incredibly hot because I was passing so many, probably over a hundred amps through them and the insulation will have melted together the coils, essentially turning into one lower resistance coil, thus taking even more current and being even less effective as a motor. And that would keep going, 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 
you know, negative feedback, positive feedback, whatever you want to call it, that would keep going until the motor basically ate itself alive. You can see the bearing is still great because I haven't actually put many kilometers on this scooter. Mechanically, it's fine. The magnets are still fine in the motor, but these coils are rooted. Oh, the smell is incredible. It's just pungent and thick and bad. The motor's dead. That's fine. We're going to upgrade it with something bigger and better. It wasn't the plan, but it is the next step in our journey to speed. I'm not gonna lie, I actually honestly thought this was finally gonna be it. I thought if I fix the speed controller, this thing would finally be able to use its new big batteries, it'd finally be fast, I could actually start riding it again. But, motors, relatively easy to replace. Parts for these are available all over the place. We're not gonna replace them with the same one, we're gonna go something, probably something rated for 36 volts because that's close to the body we're running it now, and we're gonna go even quicker. It's just a shame we're gonna have to wait a few weeks to do so. Um, a little bit disappointing, but on the other hand, holy crap, the parallel MOSFETs worked. That is awesome. I've never done that before. I learned about how to set up gate resistors, how to do it all properly, how to heat sink things, and they haven't blown up. They haven't even gotten hot. So that, that is awesome. Um, it's just a shame the motor had to die on me. But we have a way forward. And one day, one day, this scooter will be fast. I'm sorry we're not there yet, but we're gonna get there come hell or high water. And I'm learning hell of a lot along the way. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Wish me luck. Till next time, TK out.